It all started from a light cough and fever. Then it grew into something more terrible and tragic. While on the set of what went on to become the biggest and most successful film to come out of MGM Studios, Jean Harlow fell ill and had to get some rest. But less than two days later, she passed away, even after being rushed to the hospital. A painful experience for Hollywood fans, but one that triggered a lot of rumors and speculation, even though the cause of death is recorded as cerebral edema, a complication from kidney failure, a lot of people felt that was just a cover-up, and Harlow's passing was not natural. This video reveals the conspiracies, theories, and speculations around Jean Harlow's untimely demise, ex-husband's mysterious passing. On the 5th of July, 1932, Jean Harlow fell in love and married MGM executive Paul Byrne, who had helped her career and was also 22 years older than her. The two seemed in love, but tragedy struck just two months after they had gotten married. Paul was found unconscious in his home with a fatal bullet hole that had taken his life. By all ramifications, it was suicide. Paul even left Harlow a note. It read, Dearest dear, unfortunately this is the only way to make good the frightful wrong I have done you and to wipe out my abject humiliation. I love you. Paul. And then postscript. You understand that last night was only a comedy. A lot of speculations flew around, many believing that it was actually not suicide, but a premeditated attack on Paul's life by someone else. But why? One theory was that Byrne, who was a well-known Hollywood producer and director, may have been under stress due to financial and professional problems. But more interestingly, the most pronounced of the rumors is that Byrne's death may have been related to his relationship with Harlow. Some felt like the marriage was not one born from genuine love, but a debt that Harlow owed for Paul helping her in the pursuit of her career, a debt she couldn't get out of unless he passed away, so she orchestrated it. More speculation posited that the couple may have had a troubled marriage, or that Byrne may have been struggling with feelings of inadequacy or jealousy in light of Harlow's rising fame. Some have also suggested that Byrne may have been snuffed out by Harlow's powerful and influential agent, who was rumored to have controlled much of her career. And some of Paul's influential friends who believed Harlow was behind Paul's demise took revenge and made hers look controversial too. However, the facts of the matter remains that there was a suicide note, there was a gunshot wound that looked self-inflicted, and every rational evidence seemed to point to the fact that Paul had taken his own life. On the other hand, people believed that Harlow owed Paul a lot, and after marrying him, didn't want to hold up her own part of the bargain, so she arranged for his demise. Despite the speculation, there is no clear evidence to support any of these theories, and the official cause of Byrne's death remains suicide by gunshot. Harlow, a victim of a Hollywood tragic craze. During the 1930, Hollywood was plagued by a number of scandals. Some of the most notable ones occurred around the time of Jean Harlow's demise in 1937. For example, the demise of Thelma Todd, Another Hollywood actress who passed away in 1935 under very mysterious circumstances. Although her death was ruled accidental, many suspect foul play and rumors of a cover-up persisted. Another one was the Fatty Arbuckle mystery. Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle was a popular Hollywood comedian who was charged with a violation and the perpetrator of a young actress's demise, Virginia Rapp, in 1921, though he was eventually acquitted. Some of the rumors around the case were that the young actress was deliberately targeted, but why? These are two of the most notable mysteries that occurred around the time of Harlow's demise, and they also fueled a lot of controversial rumors. Contrary to what the medical report said, a lot of people believe that Harlow didn't die of those causes, but was deliberately targeted, as were dozens of other actresses around that time. Suspicions and rumors flew around after her demise. While a good number of people accepted the tragedy and made peace with it, some others still suspected foul play and claimed some of her enemies were out to get her and made her passing look like natural causes. Harlow's mother caused her demise. On the 20th of May, 1937, Jean Harlow was on set for the movie Saratoga, which unfortunately ended up being her last movie before her demise. However, Harlow was unusually moody and uninterested in the filming. When asked, she complained about having fatigue, nausea, and even abdominal pains that were affecting her productivity. 
Unfortunately, the studio doctor really didn't take it seriously and ruled it as something minor. Finally, on May 29th, while she was playing the role of a character who had a fever, Harlow's own fever was even worse than what she was supposed to be portraying, and that was when she asked to leave the set and go back to her dressing room to rest. The assistant director, William Powell, escorted her back home so she could get some rest. However, when Powell came to check in on her the next day, he found that her condition had worsened, and so he called her mother, who was away on vacation. A few days later, after Harlow passed, it was speculated that Harlow's mother had delayed taking her to see a good doctor because the mother was a Christian scientist and it went against some of the beliefs of the Church of Science. Others claimed that Harlow herself had refused early treatment and her mother had gone with it. However, these discoveries haven't been proven and remain just speculation. Body Double Conspiracy Theory Right after her demise, some of Jean Harlow's fans and supporters were not only saddened they had lost an icon at such a young age, but that Harlow would not be able to finish the movie Saratoga. She had begun the filming of the movie, but fell terribly ill soon after, and so at her demise, the movie still remained unfinished. Unfortunately, a lot of her fans believed that her double was jealous of her and wanted to take over her role, so she orchestrated something that triggered and sped up her sickness so she would leave the set. While the theory is heavy with accusations, there is once again no real proof that supports the allegation. However, after her demise, Jean Harlow's character was replaced by three doubles, Mary Dees for close-up, Geraldine Dvorak for long shots, and Paula Winslow for dubbing Harlow's lines. On July 23, 1937, the film was released. It was barely two months since Harlow's demise, but the film went on to do incredibly well. Perhaps it was owing to Harlow's death, but the film was a hit with the audience, and everyone wanted to see the last role she played before she passed as a commemoration of her memory. Not only did the film turn out to be Harlow's highest grossing film of her career, it went on to generate up to $3.3 million in worldwide rentals, becoming MGM's most successful film of the year. After her demise, Harlow was interred in the Great Mausoleum at Forest Lawn Memorial located in Glendale. William Powell had bought a huge room with multicolored marble for $25,000, which is $471,000 today. She was laid to rest in the gown she wore in Libeled Lady, and in her hands she had a white gardenia along with a note that Powell had written, Good night, my dearest darling. Harlow's inscription on her crypt reads, Our baby. Her passing was greatly felt at the studios, and an MGM writer said, The day baby died, there wasn't one sound in the commissary for three hours. Frequent co-star Spencer Tracy also wrote in his diary, Jean Harlow died, grand girl. What do you think about the circumstances around Jean Harrow's passing? Do you believe in any of the theories, or you believe it was all a tragic coincidence? Let us know in the comments.